एस एम बी कनेक्ट इंडिया लार्जेस्ट इंटीग्रेटेड सोल्यूशन प्लेटफॉर्म विच कनेक्ट एस एम ईज एंड ऑन्टरप्रन्योर अक्रॉस द नेशन डिस्पाइट सेवरल गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटिव एंड प्रोग्राम इंडियन ऑन्टरप्रन्योर एंड एस एम ईज आर स्टिल फेसिंग मेनी चैलेंजेस आर मिशन इज टू हेल्प दैम ओवरकम दो बाय एक्टिंग एज अ कैटलिस्ट इन प्रोपेलिंग बिजनेस ग्रोथ promoting innovation technological advancement and digitalization and making them successful global players we have devised five pillars to stimulate productivity and growth of smes start manage expand series annual knowledge event series organized concurrently in different cities of india atweta to recognize and celebrate women entrepreneurs of india accelerate Entrepreneur awards to honor excellent and accelerating businesses. Listing services provide a platform to expand digital footprint and customer outreach. Advisory services help SMEs deal with industry specific challenges and accelerate growth. Nationally recognized and well acclaimed in India, SMB Connect is an industry pioneer that supports SMEs. by providing strategic and innovative end to end solutions together let's help small businesses overcome all odds and succeed because small can be big good evening and welcome to the concluding session of smb connect ebook Game Plan 2021 Vision 2025 Panel Discussion. We believe you are all doing well. The year 2021 has come with so much of positivity. With for each of us, with things getting better, the COVID vaccines being out, and we hope uh, everybody gets vaccine and we come back to normalcy as soon as possible. My name is Sandeep Andre. I am the founder of uh, SMB Connect. We are one of the largest. network of smes across uh, different parts of india uh, at smb connect we have organized over 100 conferences and uh, knowledge series during the pandemic we we moved our engagement through online uh, webinars conferences and panel discussion we have also launched a portal called www.localandvocal.online where businesses can list their services and products which can be Uh, promoted globally i would request all the businesses to utilize this service which is currently free as we all know covid has impacted businesses and paralyzed the entire planning process which is why we at smb connect thought to discuss and connect with uh, key experts and take their guidance to plan next year smb connect game plan 2021 Vision 2025 is the compilation of thought-provoking articles from this eminent personality. Today, I have the pleasure of having five experts from different fields. So let me introduce uh, them, and then we'll start uh, the panel discussion. Let's start with Dr. Lakshmi Raghupati. She is visiting faculty of Terry School of Advanced Studies, an uh, eminent uh, personality and expert in solid waste management waste utilization and industrial ecology she is also involved in guiding research and doctoral post and post graduate student of terry university and mit university have worked with the uh, ministry of environment forest and climate change for last 20 years in various capacities so welcome dr lakshmi my Thank next you. guest today is dr ajay gar he is a corporate valuer counsel and lawyer uh, uh, is also a social entrepreneur with over 35 years of corporate experience uh, 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 a fellow member of ic icsi and ica uh, welcome dr gurg next guest is uh, mr vinod k pandita with over 26 years of experience in industrial institutional consulting training experiences uh, across different parts of the globe and has is currently the ceo and founder of uh, perception uh, management consulting private limited and has been consulting over has consulted over 700 odd uh, organizations across the different parts of india and uh, globe 
My next guest is uh, Orbindo Saxena. Orbindo is an independent education consultant with deep passion for education sector. With over 18 years of experience across K-12 schooling, higher education, vocational education, ancillary uh, segment, he is in the mission to invest on uh, to, to people, inspire people to invest on education, a, a sector which is definitely a lot of uh, push from everybody. Last but not least, uh, Bhautik said, a young entrepreneur is the founder of IWAPN Digital Marketing and Management Services based out of Surat, uh, with over 15, 14 years of experience in uh, providing services in digital and marketing. So uh, with this, uh, I'd like to welcome all our uh, guests on this particular panel and a video uh, which is about this particular book and then we will start our discussion with all our experts the covid 19 pandemic has been like a synchronized shock bringing the global economy to halt by the end of 2020 the world's gdp saw a steep decline small and medium enterprises that form the backbone of the indian economy were badly affected by this pandemic an estimated 140 million jobs were affected. Widespread lockdowns turbocharged a widespread change in the way we work. There is however, one way the economy can recover and it is by letting go of the legacy frameworks, modernizing operating models, and adapting to the change that confronts us. Small and medium enterprises face their own unique challenges, whether to take the path of cost-cutting or surge ahead by leveraging technology and digital transformation. SMB Connect is proud to present. Game Plan 2021 Vision 2025 Over 20 renowned professionals from diverse industries and specializations have contributed to this ebook. Their thoughts and advice that can be guiding principles for businesses. Game Plan 2021 Vision 2025 can help you navigate your way successfully into the next normal. So let's start our discussion uh, today. Uh, we have a uh, panelist covering uh, uh, expertise uh, who have from different ex ex uh, sector of industry from education to environment to business operations to finance to digital i think we will have a very great uh, we'll have a very good discussion uh, which will cover all the aspects for our businesses uh, let me start with uh, Dr. Uh, mr vinod uh, uh, you have written uh, the, the article you have written raise your work standard to attain success and achieve desired ob objective so great topic uh, let me understand uh, the thought behind uh, uh, of picking up this topic because the article is definitely great. We will ask some question about that later on. But let me understand uh, the thought behind picking up this topic. Yeah, thank you very much, Sandeepan. Uh, first of all, I must congratulate you and your team for this wonderful, uh, wonderful work. You know, because I shared this book with uh, some of my my colleagues, my associates, my clients, and the response was really amazing. So I must congratulate you once again because you know. Uh, what happens is that the thoughts are a lot. You know, we all have a lot of thoughts, experiences. But what happens is that when you put them together, I think then it becomes a, a knowledge repository for most of the readers, you know, and who can actually take away a lot of uh, tips, you know, from this. And in fact, I shared this ebook to my Australian friends, to my friends in uh, Middle East, and uh, they really have actually uh, have printed it some of them have printed it and they said that this is going to be our book to read so you know with that i think i got an opportunity and thank you for for giving me this opportunity to write something like this though i write mostly on entrepreneurship i write on business uh, uh, dynamics i write on uh, some technical stuff you know in terms of manufacturing because that's my core but this time i thought that we have gone through uh, a, a very severe uh, times, you know, of our of our lifetime so far, and uh, this pandemic has taught us a lot of things, you know, because I strongly believe and I always believe that adversities bring a lot of opportunities along, and I think most of us, all the professionals, have taken the best advantage of this. And then I realized that what happened is during these times, uh, I take examples from my kids, you know, from my children, and for the kids. Who have across the nation, across the globe, have studied online all these all this while, and there was a lot of lot of learning from that uh, thing that they 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 did not stop even for a single day. Both the educational institutions as well as children, you know, they have really 
kept up that pace, you know, and they did not waste even a single day. And uh, even my my kids, you know, one is in college and she completed her engineering, and my son is in school. Both of them have really shown uh, their dedication, their involvement, and commitment to the education system, whatever it was. So I realized that in industry, how come uh, business owners, entrepreneurs can take advantage and how they have taken advantage of this pandemic times, you know, and while they have gone online and started working from home. I know that most of my clients who are especially in manufacturing sector, they did not, uh, maybe in the, in the beginning, probably they might not have gone to office for 15 days, one month or one and a half months. But then after that, they started going to the offices but then most of the most of the uh, entrepreneurs most of the business owners most of the companies especially it professional services um, except for the essential services everybody has worked from home then i realized that this is the time you know when everybody must understand realize and really introspect that the work standards are the most important thing while you are working from your bedroom uh, and trying to talk global while you are locally sitting in your bedroom and trying to or maybe your drawing room trying to really uh, teach the world you know what you're doing i think that you know, because i have witnessed a lot of webinars i have witnessed a lot of online courses and i've realized there are very few people who have really maintained those standards so i thought uh, why not to write something on work standards because i have been always uh, a fan and a proponent of quality uh, of life quality of work and the standards you know per se you know it's not only about the uh, standards of your products and services but the work the way you do your professional work the way you conduct business the way you actually deliver your your uh, your services to the world i think those standards are very important so once you raise the bar of your standards you are seen as an expert, you're seen as the industry leader, you're seen as the best company to be followed. And I think all of us have this innate ability to be a leader of our industry. And I think, I think the moment we raise our standards, uh, the best thing what happens out of this, this particular thought process is that you start having fellowship and followership, and then people start learning from you. So obviously, I can only teach someone. I can only inspire somebody if I can if I can be inspired myself. So I think uh, uh, there are five things which I have explained uh, in my article, uh, which I will be sharing probably once we have the second round of discussion. But these five elements, you know, it's like we have five elements. These are the five elements, you know, which are very essential to raise our work standards. And while doing uh, this and while raising our standards to the next level of, of quality, I think uh, this work from home and this new normal, which everybody is talking about, though it's not going to be always there, but I think people have now started understanding that, yes, this is also another normal which they can parallelly do. And I think uh, those five things I will be sharing once you ask me questions, probably. Sure, sure, then sure. I'll be sharing so let, me, let, me, let me take it from, from where you have left, uh, Dr., uh, Mr. Vinod, about work from home. And uh, that's something which uh, started well. Uh, people were responding well. But I think there's a fatigue of being working, uh, work from home. And, and then people are trying to get back. So let me ask Dr. Garg, uh, uh, do you think this work from home is stay, uh, going to stay for the industry or people are going to go back to routine life at a, at a much faster pace than the, the way we were all expecting? Because there's a lot of noise. A lot of people are talking that the work from home is going to stay. People want to work from home. Uh, let me ask you uh, about uh, your views about for, specifically for the in industry, uh, manufacturing, traders, how they're going to work. Yes. See this work from home is not going to work permanently there are reasons for that youngsters learn in the company of the seniors now while doing work from home youngsters are feeling that whatever they know they only know that much and they are unable to learn the new things number two seniors are also facing the problem with work from home because with Time to time interventions, they were able to get good work from their juniors. Mm. And now this is not happening and they are feeling irritated 
because they have to do more interruptions for more time i have intentionally made this environment behind me foggy this is work from home foggy environment <laughs> and this <laughs> for the simple reason that performance for any business whether it is service sector whether manufacturing whether trading only team works if team is not there efficiency is going to suffer so wherever opportunity will happen whenever opportunity will happen work from home will reduce to maximum one day in a week and for rest of the working days this will be work from work station so let me ask uh, bautik because bautik runs an uh, our digital marketing company he has a team of people and he has seen both the world of work from home and work from uh usually work from office uh, now he has seen the work from home also so what is your experience uh, uh, about i am not talk, i'm not going to the digital part of your business but more interested to know about this work from home how did you manage your team and what is your uh, thinking about how people should uh, move from work from home to yeah so i think like uh, uh, the, the answer varies industry to industry the vertical to vertical in case of our industry it is still that people are still working from the home the agencies people are not going at the agency same say the, the same story with the it companies still the the it company they are not calling their employees at their places and they all are working from the home the only reason that maybe the people who belongs to this industry they are already very much techno savvy people and i think they have been able to manage that thing uh, if we see the other side of the coin what we have observed we being the owner of the companies we have seen that we could cut off the cost of the company and that is one of the major reasons that so many of us are still you know believing very positively that work from home if not the full day or maybe like what mr ajay said that at least couple of days in the week should be there and this is what we are doing right now we are still working from home half day and the second part of the the day we 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 go to our offices and we just coordinate to each other so that the next morning we all can complete our regular tasks uh, so this is what we are doing and yes uh, as far as the transformation is concerned it is going to be i think not so difficult according to my understanding because we all have worked all these years from the office only but i feel that the decision has to be taken by the top management in a very uh, you know uh, in the manner uh, by looking at the comfort uh, comfort of the that team team members uh thanks uh, gothic i think uh, work from home has a major impact on the uh, uh, education sector because that was never been experienced in india so orbindo if you can let us understand uh, how and what are the challenges faced by the education sector due to this pandemic and with uh, people or students not coming or not able to come or allowed to come to schools and colleges sure so thank you sandeepan i mean thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to be you know a panel member on this particular forum and then you know sharing my thoughts um, in india a lot of people want to be followers but leaders are the ones who actually you know uh, leap into the darkness they are the first ones who enter you know the unknown territory and clear the path for others to enter so i think you have really you know uh, played the role of a leader given us uh, this opportunity to share our thoughts uh, you know compile it in a very nicely published book and i think it has been marketed very well and for all those people who have not yet downloaded this book but are attending this webinar i think my request to all of you is to go and download this book uh, and i think there are some really good thought pieces which have been compiled very well by sandeepan and his team so hearty uh, congratulations on that sandeepan and i'm sure this will be only the first leg of many such additions to come sure. so education is something which i think all of us have a touch point and uh, because you know like all of us have our either children studying in schools or colleges so nobody is uh, unknown to what's happening i think everyone is known at what's happening now uh, how education sector got impacted i think as uh, bhautik mentioned that different uh, verticals and different companies you know have uh, different needs 
and uh, similarly in education also you have multiple types of schools multiple categories of schools uh, so government schools if i talk about which constitute almost um, say 75 percent of 15 lakh schools that we have i mean at a you know stroke of the midnight i think all the schools got shut down and uh, while government had several initiatives to create online learning tools platforms uh, they used uh, dth podcast radio channels but i think uh, this year's learning outcomes have really got missed uh, to a very large extent across government schools and that is my uh, you know first uh, feedback on your question private schools and specifically the ones who are at the top of the pyramid what we call premium or super premium schools they were already having uh, you know online setups online classrooms uh, virtual classrooms one to one coaching happening fortunately or unfortunately all the ed tech companies which have raised billions of dollars in the last one year they have also targeted this particular segment of the you know the top of the pyramid or the middle of the pyramid the ones who have actually got missed out are the ones who are at the bottom of the pyramid. What typically, uh, I'm not generalizing, but you know, even at the expense of generalization, I think typically what uh, set of people have got missed out in this is, you know, people who were going to government schools, which are roughly about, you know, 50% of the total students going in um, the school education system. So I think those are the ones who have got really missed out. And uh, many of these ed tech companies have really not targeted their products at this particular segment. I mean, obviously there are practical challenges also because, you know, people typically would come from a lower strata of the society. You would not have a PC at home for the child. You may not have a dedicated mobile phone for the child. So if he wants to access something on the mobile phone properly, uh, he could see on mobile phone. Uh, you know, there is no broadband connectivity at the home. Um, you know, there are uh, challenges in terms of need for vernacular content. So all these things, nobody was prepared. It just, you know, happened overnight and nobody was prepared. I think um, that is the segment which has got completely, you know, lost out. Uh, but even the students who are studying in private institutions and all, I think government uh, with a view to restricting the screen time, uh, reduce the number of classrooms interactions to say three or four hours uh, per day. Typically mm -hmm. when a child goes to school, he spends about eight to nine hours, right? So on those aspects also, I'm sure, you know, peer learning could not happen and there are different modalities of learning. It's not just, you know, the teacher uh, talking and children learning, right? Uh, it's not a broadcast which happens. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think those got missed out. Physical fitness uh, has gone for a toss for most children. And uh, I, I think now my son has put on, I think maybe around 10 kg more in the last uh, 10 years, 10 months. Then you are uh, anyway, I think it's, yes. yeah, I understand because education is definitely is one which is really hit, and we, we will have a follow up question to understand how we can revive it. Uh, continue with education. We'll ask uh, Dr. Lakh uh, Lakshmi, uh, yeah. though she is from the environmental front, and I think one of the positive of the entire uh, uh, lockdown in the initial days was a lot of uh, 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 things reviving of. Uh, uh, ecological uh, stuff, specifically the dolphins coming in Ga Ganges. Uh, I see a lot of what's the videos coming in, in, in Delhi with like le leopards and then yes. others uh, moving around the roads. Yes. This was a temporary yes. phase. Uh, things have gone back to the same old uh, uh, problem of pollution and all. And SMEs particularly are always concerned that pollution is something which is they don't want to take that headache. They always look at pollution as another compliances and an inspector Raj coming in to take and the, their money. So what is the reason why uh, businesses are not very keen to adhere to environmental compliances? And how do you think it can be, uh, that they can be resolved? Uh, at the outset, I must thank Sandeepan and his team for pursuing this uh, uh, agenda and bringing out such a beautiful compilation which I think is going to go a long way. And you have to do a lot of revivals in future, you know, updation, other things, because already people have complimented, so you have to live up to that standard. So that's good. Yeah. The other part, no, but that is the thing. So every activity, whatever we do, you can always see a plus and a minus. 
So in a way, when you talked about the kangaroos running in uh, on the streets of uh, Australia or the lions and tigers walking in the streets or the uh, fishes again uh, cloning. So all these things are because of the uh, sort of arrest on the environment because we were doing a lot of damage to the environment by unnecessary travel, unnecessary um, activity and our lifestyles have really been impacting the environment. So it's a sort of in a in a way i'll say it's a blessing in disguise when actually the arrest of activities have really promoted some environmental goods for us the good in the environment but uh, basically what happens is there is also a factor which i think uh, arvind also mentioned that there is there has to be some sort of an interaction that has not, see, as far as the government is, I've been in both the government as well as the teaching. So government, as far as government is concerned, they just logged in for, I think, one month or maybe 40, 45 days. After that, they started working. There was a sort of 20%, 30%, 50%. Now it's 100% at attendance. So they have started functioning. But what for are they functioning? Their functioning approach to even understand they are not able to even monitor systems, how the things are and all the it's things what you said about the uh, pollution coming down and those goody goody pictures that we get and all that. There is a sort of I have a feeling it's not that 100 percent, but because they were trying to evaluate in the system with, with and without. So one thing we can see that with and without every system we have to adjust. So we have gone a little beyond the, uh, we have been so stressful to the environment that this has, uh, this lockdown and in our unnecessary participation of moving about, traveling, etc., has been arrested. But at the same time, the education side, unless we have interactive education, the peer interaction, the teacher uh, uh, student relationship i don't even know they all come and log in 60 70 fellows in the class they are all there but i don't even know whether they are there through the class the, uh, because my lectures were two hours and i'm sure nobody would be sitting there even i used to get my backache you know <laughs> sitting for two hours sluggishness and you are it has become a passive education from active education it becomes a passive education when you have interactive classes you also stimulate you pinch the students ask them to come for even the dullest fellow who goes and sits in the remote corner i'll pull them out so they have in it and also the management systems you know the management education has taught us so much of interactive education now today any subject ecology environment circular economy or your waste management everything you show with the demonstration and that has been totally lacking so even if you talk of blue bin and green bin and brown or red bin they will only be keeping keep, keep wondering what should be the size what should be the volume what should be the dimension what should be the shape so this is all imaginary so if you show a bin different kind of bin for waste management that will be there now coming to the msme sectors where i have been working for the last almost uh, um, all through because right in the beginning in 1987 88 89 we worked for the msmes to bring in cleaner production processes reduce the waste so we taught them the 3 r principle of reduce reuse recycle etc and they they educated themselves why because we went to the field we, we were sat with them the electroplating units the whichever unit it was we chose for uh, they had done it but what happens is now if you are not able to demonstrate if you are not able to convince because especially the msmes they will go on business as usual so there is always a tendency for them to spring back. We are not, nobody, nobody is looking after us. Nobody is going to check. Nobody is going to find because they, many of them do not. When, you, when I talk of the MSMEs, the micro to um, um, the uh, medium scale industries, it's such a wide range. Some of them don't even come under the environmental norms because the reason being we thought they will not be able to comply with the requirement because it will be very expensive for them to run the show and they are our backbones so that was the reason why government took a little bit leniency towards them to grow but the growth if you look at 10 small units and one big unit the 10 small units will be polluting very heavily compared to them so a stage has come. We were actually in the past decade, uh, 10 years, since in the last 10 years, we've been more stringent on the MSMEs. 
and all these micro enterprises have also been asked to comply with the norms, regulate their water requirement, less polluting industry, less polluting activity. And some of the activities are not at all polluting. It's just handling of material. There we've taught them the safety, the safety principles. All this will come only when you give them a practical approach, give them appropriate training and interact with them. And words are very, very convincing. You cannot have this two dimensional approach to them because they need you to be there with them. If you are there with them, they understand. We have put many people on the rail and now I think they've all gone back to business as usual. So we have to again de retune. And this plastic, I brought the plastic as a new sector where there is a lot of opportunity for the MSMEs to participate and be good boys to do a proper recycling and bringing about, not to say that plastic is creating havoc and environmental problem. It is there, it is visible. But uh, how that, do we that we'll talk about plastic in a little later. Let me get, go to Vinod uh, 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 Pandita, and because he's also done a lot of work uh, with uh, uh, the businesses and MSM industry, help them out in a lot of uh, 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 reduction of their cost by managing their resources properly. And Vinod was talking earlier about the five principles, so maybe you can uh, ask him yeah. to share his views about how he has worked with organizations to reduce their cost by managing resources, predominantly the, pol the pollut pollutant part and the five principles he was uh, uh, has written on, on the book. So Vinod, if you can just share. Uh... Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. I think uh, every panelist has given a very valid, I think, uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Lakshmi said that, you know, it is it is not uh, a same yardstick for everyone. I think every organization behaves differently. Manufacturing has its own uh, ways of approaching and uh, dealing with the pandemic. Uh, different industries had different uh, approaches. But as, as a whole, if I look at the business ecosystem, a complete business ecosystem, a lot of people who have thrived in these times were people who were already ready and who were actually uh, prepared to really take this head on you know and the the pivoting you know which they did uh, you know within a span of 45 days and i could i could see my clients you know bouncing back in less than 30 days or 45 days and they they bounced back and they came onto the track immediately because they realized that uh, that is the only survival method for them so uh, whatever I have written in my article uh, about the work standards, you know, I will take you through those five principles first, though these are not something which is out of the world. We all know about them. It's only that we have to actually take them seriously. And every entrepreneur, every business owner, every professional has to really, this is my personal, uh, personal value system, I would say, and my personal understanding that uh, the first one is the self-discipline. You know, if we all entrepreneurs and professionals are self-disciplined because there can be any challenge coming on our way, but self-discipline is very important. And that actually uh, starts with the conscious mind, you know, whether it is environment, whether it is safety, whether it is productivity, whether it is quality, whether it is supplier management, whether it is customer management. So self-discipline is the foundation of all times. You know, so that's something which I have written and explained in my this thing and self-discipline will only happen when you have measurable goals. If you don't have measurable goals, you will not be able to achieve anything. So those clients of mine, um, I don't want to name them right now, but I have seen uh, some of my clients who have really thrived in these nine months and their sales has really gone up by 40% to 60%. And the e-commerce platform they have utilized the most, you know, uh, because of their products going to the nook and corner of rural India and they were all FMCG and uh, white good manufacturers, some of the uh, tier two automotive. See automotive company, which is automotive manufacturing companies, which are in a in a tier zone, you know, who are supplying to OEMs, they have very little chance to do that. But rest of the companies who are, whose users are you and me, you know, they have really thrived, you know, the essential items, the white goods and stuff like that. So first one is self-discipline. The second one which I have talked about is positive mindset because I believe that two things affected. One is the physical physical and the mental uh, perspective of people. You know, a lot of people lost their lost their uh, hold, you know, on their positivity. People became very negative. You know, they, they were scared. They, they, have, they were fearful. 
but there were certain people who took really good care of themselves who were who were taking precautions but they did not stop even a single day and they encouraged their teams they really made them move forward you know they said no you come or even if somebody wanted to uh, work from home because of their parents being old at home and they didn't want to come out and there are a lot of entrepreneurs who have shown that leadership and to supporting their teams to work from home and those who were not essentially to come to the office they have managed it that way also the third one is the third principle is the focus 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 and focus and and everyone has to be mindful of this uh, uh, thing called focus you know because you cannot do five things together you cannot do even two things sometimes together multitasking is fine but then there has to be a tremendous amount of focus which actually gets you there you know where you want to be and the fourth one which i talked about is developing appropriate rituals and manage time you know that's something because you have plenty of time with at your at your because this pandemic has taught us the the importance of time you know we used to travel four hours a day minimum i'm talking about uh, maybe if somebody is, is staying in gurgaon and he has an office and still he has two hours of drive and if you are traveling from gurgaon to noida you have a total five hours of of so you have saved that time what will you do with that time are you are you studying something new are you reading books are you really um, utilizing that time you know for your future uh, course of action and your improvement uh, you know most of the people have taken a lot of courses and i think those people who have really moved to that level have really managed their time very well and they have improved and last but not the least is that we have to learn from our mistakes now this adversity has given us an opportunity to learn that whatever mistakes we did in the past when we were all thriving or we were all surviving uh, before pandemic i think now this time has taught us that we have to learn from mistakes because everybody mistake uh, mistake happens by everyone you know and we we make as and as an entrepreneur i would say whether it is finance whether it is uh, people management whether it is customer selection whether it is uh, you know anything for that matter so uh, i think uh, the most important thing is that uh, you know i think you have put it in very nice way in your in your in my article that instead of regretting and repenting about the failures and mistakes of the past one must consider them as learning experiences and move forward with new found resilience and a positive attitude because you know attitude is like a flat tire you know it's like a flat tire of a car you know if you don't fix it you cannot move ahead so you have to fix your attitude and move forward so this is what i wanted to i want and all of these five principles from this perspective help you to raise your work standards and apart Absolutely. from this industry as i said because you started with that industry perspective i can only say that every industry has its own they have to find their own solutions with the teams but these are the five core principles they can use i agree, to you, I agree. Comple completely agree because if the individuals follow their their their, their path of uh, uh, with the resilience i think things can be taken head on and one of the thing dr garg has mentioned very uh, one of the, uh, is in his article that as a business owner as a business you need to look at uh, how do you reduce the debt because when things are not going in your uh, direction uh, the first and foremost thing is to take the defensive part reduce your cost much easier to talk about it very difficult to to to, to actually do that so dr garg you can share a few ideas uh, uh, about how do you do uh, control your debts how do you control your cost and also going forward what should be the plan to manage your finance because things are opening up uh, yesterday uh, uh, dr uh, subramanian talking about a v shaped growth uh, india looking at 11 point uh, something uh, growth uh, uh, in gdp in uh, this next financial year so there is a lot of positivity uh, do you still say that we should look at the cost cutting uh, reduce debts dr gurk Oh, yes, Mr. Sandeep, well, see, it is very easy to say reduce the debt, and it is very easier to reduce the debt actually. When you are in business for four, five years, or ten years, then what happens that you accumulate certain assets which are not being used to generate the income, or where your income generation is less than your debt cost. Just look at two assets. either in the basket of your business or in your personal basket basket number 1 business basket 
where you have accumulated certain assets which are not being used to earn to gain the income that means those assets which we have not used for last 6 months this is the time say bye bye to these assets number 2 even in your personal basket what happens that when you are in business you accumulate certain assets which are not being used by you for example suppose you have two houses you are living in single house now whenever you will visit the second house that second house will demand some money from you rather than giving money to you and rentals are always less than the interest interest on 1 crore rupees and rental on 1 crore rupees rentals are always less whether it is residential property or it is commercial property property can happen later on and because msmes work on very difficult model what they do they take the debt they purchase on cash and they offer credit and when they offer credit what happens the vicious cycle begins that credit will become more credit next year and next year then credit offered to particular party will further increase and whenever they want to cut off this relation with the customer then debit note will happen from customer that means whatever they have earned that will be taken away by way of debit note that means when i say that go for debt light call it debt light d b t l i g s t debt light then i also say that when you want to go debt light also go credit light if you have customers who want credit it is better to cut them off not to supply them because ultimately you are going to be loser as msme if you know that 5 years or 2 years down the line you are going to be loser then what is the fun of doing such business there is no fun and if your debts are taking maximum part of your profit you see the balance sheets then you will find that entrepreneur is making 20 lakh rupees in a year banker is making 50 lakh rupees in a year from the same business what is the fun when you are making profits but most of the profits are being taken away by the bankers it is better to bring the partner rather than the bankers in difficult times mm-hmm. so that survival is there and i would like to put one more thing over here and that thing is in relation to that if you take care of your vendors if you mm. keep your vendors in good books then your customers automatically will come in your good books okay rather than focusing on customers this is the time when you shall focus on vendor what is the advantage of this advantage is that whenever you want material you will be given priority if you are in the good books of your vendor and you will get raw material at the time when you need it rather than storing it and there also you will be saving money over there storage cost great great i think you are talking about uh, how to save cost and i think in in, in the article uh, dr lakshmi has also talked about how to use waste as a resource and and she is also talking about plastic being a very prominent waste and you can use plastic as a resource and maybe it can help in generating some revenues so dr lakshmi if you can just throw some light on uh, that particular part because a lot of people will be interested to understand how you can uh, use plastic as a resource in your business actually you know we got this light uh, uh, bulb lighted only when we saw the ppes coming out of the masks and ppes coming out of covid you know the scale in which it was being brought out we we it has overrun all other plastics the rest of the plastics so then they were only thinking of destroying it by burning it so there was a there was a, there were a few research papers and publications during that time that they said which said that there is a scope of non contaminated plastics to be recycled and we have been doing a lot of because the, if you look at the all the olefins the polypropylene polyethylene and polystyrene all of them are recyclable 
when there is a recyclable plastic all the damage is done with the plastic which is not recyclable which is coming together and going there so similarly this we learned from the medical institutions in medical and healthcare institution i have about 40 theses produced by my master students where they studied across india the medical healthcare institution they said it's only 15% of the contaminated waste which is actually the biomedical waste which need which contains infection whereas the 85% 80 to 85% of waste is non contaminated which gets mixed and everything becomes contaminated so this principle of segregation has now come in the most of the covid institutions also the um, in house um, uh, uh, this thing containment and also the hospitals everywhere they said which has directly contacted the covid patients that should be treated separately which can be destroyed by burning or uh, producing and even that burning is not simple burning you burn produce energy use that energy you can use for heating water you can supply it to the grid you can activate that energy but what you do with the other part of the thing is that you have to recycle so the recycling activity is been a with the informal sector or the msmes or the smes all these people have been doing recycling in some form or the other now if we are diverting them to do and when they do the plastic recycling it's globally you know it's announced that oh india is very bad in doing plastic recycling but they are doing a very big job otherwise the plastic will go and clog your waters the drains your uh, go into the poll polluting polluting your water bodies land everything they were doing a service they were picking it up for even from the worst dump sites and they were giving it for recycling but the proper Pro process of recycling is something we are, where i mentioned that name environmentally sound management that is you choose the technology appropriate technology educate them bring them and there are empty number of small ways of handling the plastic cleaning it and bringing it to and finally granulating it once you granulate the process it is there and this is all known and who will know the education is the academicians the researchers who know about it we have to communicate them to these small enterprises to learn that we only cater to the all r and d is only for the big fellows why why only for big fellows they are taking raw material from the um, na natural resource but these fellows are doing a great service by doing the recycling so they have to have lot of scope is there if they can do that part of it there has to be some assigned value of seg collection segregation and you and me we have yeah saddled with plastics we think we don't know what to do we put it okay we'll dispose it off that's all we don't know what fate it faces so once it goes to this and it becomes essential resource because plastic is nothing but a carbon material it can be converted can be easily mon ma manipulated to convert into another you may not use for that particular baby food grade or a medical grade you may use the plastic for your uh, foot mat door mat whereas we are using virgin plastics for all those things so now the world has learned not only india but the world has learned that all these plastics which we think contaminated they can also be recycled and brought back to the life so that we don't go on manufacturing proliferating the plastic because it's a molecule which will proliferate and it will actually engulf the whole uh, um, uh, mankind or even the life systems so it's sort of the circulation na huh. recycling has to be focused for that and all the small fellows can do it getting the businesses how to utilize and, yes. and maybe there's a lot of yes. opportunity for businesses to actually start recycle a uh, a uh, uh, yes. uh, industry on its own or a business of its own of waste management no, they are looking for they are looking for you and the big uh, people like proctor gamble and uh, colgate pomoli and all they they don't mind having a recycled plastic put in their place because the squeezy tubes or the uh, sh uh, shampoo uh, sachet or the bottles which we get we can have the recycled material provided we eliminate the contamination part so that we have to teach them and these are the people who can give them a really deal good deal cheap material so that they can really go and there is and it is also we are clearing the environment maybe we can so, collaborate and discuss how and take go to the sure, industry sure please, please. if, if uh, you, we have to uh, communicate uh, to those sure sure now let me move to because we are just coming uh, uh, quite close to our uh, session uh, mm -hmm. one of the key thing is the entire pandemic is digital transformation and a lot of small businesses i have seen uh, never imagined uh, a year back a person who's uh, small sme manufacturing uh, 
chairs and tables for furniture doing webinars. So, Bhautik, you have been in digital marketing. How many businesses have you able to get or how seen converted to digital marketing at, or started with the digital uh, transformation journey? Please share your thoughts on that. Uh, so very quickly, uh, if I try to answer your question, uh, Sandeepan. So first of all, this the entire word digital transformation is a huge word. Right. So what Dr. Ajay is saying or what uh, uh, Mr. Vinod or what Dr. Lakshmi has said that when you're talking about the MSME and the manufacturing units, there is a need of the tra digital transformation in the process and the sub processes. But the thing is that what we had seen the very positive sign among the understanding of the digital platform, thanks to this pandemic. So we personally felt this pandemic was literally blessing in disguise for our industry because till the date what was happened that when we used to go and meet the business owners and the top management, we had to convince them that this is the time you need to adopt digitalization. You need to go to Internet because you are here in the market, but you are not there in the virtual market. So this is the right time you should go. But they were very skeptical. They were not so much confirmed. The conviction was lacking. But thanks to this this time period. So it all started by the use of the TikTok. First of all, during that time period, the use of the Instagram. Then people started moving to the live sessions on Facebook. People started understanding there is something called Instagram Live. So this is how people have started adopting these platforms. And then they realized because so many have they, they have changed their business. They have started something new. They have closed their old unit and started doing something mm -hmm. in terms of trading or selling online. So they started doing something and all those something were on the line on the digital. So I have seen that couple of industries, they've grown a lot, specifically uh, the textile industry, because you, as you know, Surat is the textile hub of India. So, so many uh, companies, have, they started selling their clothes, uh, stitched and unstitched garments uh, through online channels, uh, specifically with their own uh, e-commerce website. Uh, another uh, thing was the, the online uh, retail, retail sec uh, sector, they have started going a lot. And education industry, although they are, running their uh, curriculums online, but they understood that this is the right time to also engage the parents. So this is uh, the time period post Diwali. I can say that so many people have started coming very positively. But uh, again, to see the second side of the coin, the half, uh, you know, the, the full glass is always a full glass and half glass is always a half glass. So right now what we are seeing that so many entrepreneurs and the business owners they, they know something, something about digital marketing, but that is very painful to us because according to them, that is everything about digital marketing and people like us, we understand this is not all about digital marketing. So yes, uh, but yeah, uh, at the bottom line, 2020 was very good for the digital marketing and now 2021 is actually going to see a lot of investment to come on internet space for growth of the business that i can assure you for sure great yeah i i, I can i fully understand uh, i have seen my wife spending one of putting up time and seeing a facebook live for buy to buy a sari from a local uh, uh, shop on uh, shop owners based out of calcutta and he they were like spending half an hour or one hour talking about each and every sari giving description color design code uh, now let, let me uh, move to the last question to Ar Arbindo before we uh, wrap it up. Uh, Arbindo, this particular pandemic has an impact on education, and education has a long-term impact of an, on an economy. How do you right. think this this is this is going to impact the, the the employability of people who have going to be come out of uh, uh, in next one year or maybe next two years? Is there any study going on or have you done some study which will talk about people who have been graduating this year or will be graduating next year how good they will be in the job market will they be employable uh, or people will be able to take it uh, take them on their roles right so i think uh, this is a very good question and uh, i think uh, the problem is very very complex also because uh, before pandemic you know, we were adding close to 1 million people to our workforce every month. And just imagine, you know, you have placed 10 lakh people and it's not over a month now and, you know, another lot of 10 lakh people come in. Uh, 
on top of this i think close to 140 million jobs or the number i think which you were sharing i mean those were the many jobs which got impacted so i think in the last 9 months or so i think uh, covid has left a very deep dent into our economy a lot of people are out of jobs uh, and specifically people uh, who were in the support functions so due to this pandemic if you see two sectors or three sectors or sub segments which got severely hit in education one was the preschool category you know the preschool segment all preschools have been shut for almost a year now and most of these preschools or even some of the low income private schools were running on a lease rental model so all of them have actually you know completely gone out of business i think that's one segment which got severely impacted the second sub segment which got severely impacted was a residential school segment because this pandemic happened uh, you know towards the end of march and it was almost the end of the academic year uh, children in residential schools never came back so residential school category you know again got completely screwed up and um, you know i don't know when they will restart you know same with preschool category also i think um, this pandemic like in uh, you know um, we have this term uh, in governance called you know lifting of corporate veil or piercing of corporate veil i think what this pandemic has done is lifted that you know that veil uh, which many organizations had in the front and i think that veil was about uh, ethics and intent and i think uh, due to this pandemic companies can now be very well segre- segregated in terms of how good they were during these tough times in terms of ethics and intent a lot of people had surpluses from the past uh, you know not all schools say for example but many uh, of them had huge surpluses but when this pandemic hit and it impacted only a year's cash flow a lot of bus drivers were fired a lot of uh, maids were fired a lot of support staff was fired teachers and you know faculty salaries were cut down i think even if they could have uh, afforded to you know uh, fund them for a year uh, with depleted uh, cash flows coming in many private schools chose to let people go and i think these are the kind of people who will really have tough time in again attracting uh, people you know now coming back on what will be the employability scenario and all obviously things will take time to come back to the new normal because i think the dent is huge uh and and the problem is that every month 1 million plus people are joining our workforce and i think government has also made it very clear that instead of asking or you know being a job seeker why don't you become a job giver and that is why you know there is lot of focus on initiatives like economic innovation mission and startup india i think that is what the government also wants that people should now become entrepreneurs they should start up and uh, you know recruit people and even you know fresh engineering graduates rather than being job seekers they should you know get into this startup thing and i think recently our honorable prime minister i think he has allocated some 1000 crore fund for startups so i think uh, fresh graduates obviously uh, if they find uh, you know good jobs that is fine otherwise they will really have to create a business plan for themselves and think um, on the lines of an entrepreneur i think i think that you said it well because if you are out of college uh, the focus should be on starting a new business instead of looking for a job uh, i think we are we are running short of we are out of time but before we wind up uh, budget is expected in next two days let me have uh, a one line or one expectations from each of uh, from each one of you to understand what you are expecting from the budget in next two days time so let's start with uh, dr lakshmi Ma'am, if you can share, what is your expectations from budget? Um, already, we are seeing that there is a lot of relaxation being given in the budget. That's what is the pre-budget uh, notion. <clears throat> But, uh, how do we make up for the losses? That's my big question. Uh, because of the uh, uh, arrangements where there was not pro- much of a progress in the productivity, how is it going to make up? So one of the avenues that I have opened up, saying that we should encourage more of the MSMEs to do c- certain activities like recycling and all, where they, where they don't have to look for new um, raw materials and they can sort of uh, uh, circulate the material and try to. make make it more productive so perhaps maybe the budget should give some incentives for that as of now i'm seeing most of the things being pumped out pumped into the losses that have been incurred 
and also to make up for the salaries and all which people have lost. So that is priority. Of course, in the long run, we should also build up some more activities which will not be too much of money sucking activity. Rather than it will be more productive and money giving activity. So that has to be allocated. So I think there is a, a avenue for allocation because that's what I came to know that they're going to do. And uh, I, I'm expecting at least some incentives, incentivization and giving some levy to the small uh, MSMEs specifically to their, for their growth. So that our new jump people who are going to jump into bandwagon of startups, they also get that financial uh, um, boost. The financial boost is to be provided. Otherwise, where will they go for? Papa, mommy, ke paise mein to pad liya. They have to <laughs> now be <laughs> on and their urge for earning will be satisfied. So that I expect something from that side also. Bhautik? Uh, so I think um, I'm expecting some encouragement to the digital payment system and uh, e-commerce sector. So I'm looking for these two things. Uh, Dr. Gug, uh, Gug uh, if you can share your expectations from budget. Yes, this is a sort of tagline. Budget will give something to everybody. And everybody will feel that he has been given less. <laughs> <laughs> so are you expecting anything or do you are happy whatever? <laughs> Uh, from, 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 from. <laughs> uh, belongs to the second second line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Vinod, uh, if you want to share something. Yeah, I think I will go with uh, Dr. Ajay because I think uh, I think I'm sure that government is uh, government is really uh, aware that what they have to do. I think my expectations uh, are not going to really make any sense right now because I think tomorrow I think the budget will be announced. I think we, I'm just I'm just only interested for my entrepreneur community. They should get something collateral free. They should get some kind of, uh, you know, I would say based on their valuation, based on their uh, credibility, they should get some money to really start up. And I think it's not only startups who have a scalable model. There are many companies who have great ideas for traditional business, businesses, but they are not in that category. They should also be focused. So. In Gujarat, you know, for example, I have one one of my friend, you know, he has been struggling with one uh, one prototype, you know, for agriculture industry, for food processing industry, but he's not getting money from anywhere. So now I'm trying to help them to get money from some uh, private investor, you know, in our network. But then he needs a crore of rupees. He has gone to banks, but banks have uh, sent him back. So he doesn't have uh, those pr preparations, you know, for, for getting that fund. And he doesn't have anything to give in collateral. So he is frustrated. So he doesn't know where to go. So I'm just expecting that government should really take care of these entrepreneurs also. Thank you. Sure. I think the collateral free is, is, is uh, funding is something which is very important. Uh, I also have a couple of people who are looking for similar kind of thing. Or uh, for education sector, uh, I'm sure this is uh, very, very focused for uh, the government will be focusing on education because <coughs> what are you expecting on that? See, education is one sector where no finance minister can be blamed for overspending. You know, <laughs> <laughs> more the better. And uh, I think for several years, you know, you know, starting from Kothari Commission's recommendations in 1986, uh, I think we've been waiting to see about a six percent spend on education, uh, which is still not happened. I think it's still not happened. We are still at about 3.5 percent or so. So I think we need substantial investments and. At the same point of time, you know, I want to share that, uh, you know, uh, this national education policy, which was overdue for so long, government has shown intent, you know, even during this pandemic, that policy was released, which means that, you know, even when there was an opportunity to push it back by another nine months, I think government really, uh, you know, pushed for it and got it out in time, even during mm -hmm. pandemic. So now, you know, the new ed education policy, uh, if it has to be implemented correctly, across different states the government will have to increase uh, its you know budgetary allocation on education great and one thing one more thing which is i think um, which does not need much of thinking is uh, government is definitely going to spend a lot on the health care uh, because that something is the immediate fallout of the pandemic there's a lot of spent expected on the healthcare segment so uh that is one which all the people are also expecting so i think we had a great discussion uh thank you uh very much uh, 
ladies and gentlemen i think we had a very good discussion as a very lively discussion we had uh overshot by some time but i think it's good we will not able to take the questions right now but uh, uh, if there's a, uh, we will ask uh, share this question to the respective people and they will respond back uh, to you directly so with this uh, we'd like to uh, uh, end the session thank you very much once again all my panelists orbindo dr lakshmi dr gar uh, vinod pandita bhautik said for being here uh, so thank sure. you very much have a great time uh, let's hope uh, whatever your wishes or the expectation of budget comes true in next two days when uh, Madam Finance Minister uh, puts it uh, to the to the nation and to all our uh, viewers and uh, delegates who are watching this. Uh, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, there are a lot coming up in that. We have uh, uh, our next series called SMB Connect Spotlight being launched in next few days. Uh, where our first uh, uh, we I have been interviewing uh, the first person is the CEO of MIDC. And he shared uh, how MIDC is helping industries to, to set up uh, their industries in Maharashtra state. So stay tuned into that and, and, and uh, keep following SMB Connect for more updates and news on SMB and the SME ecosystem. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Sandeep. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Uh -huh.